What would happen if Trump nuked North Korea? How many people would perish? As tensions between the U.S. and North Korea escalate, the chances of nuclear war appear more alarming than ever before. But what would happen if Donald Trump dropped the mother of all nuclear bomb on Kim Jong-un's hermit nation? America's largest tested nuclear weapon, Castle Bravo, equates to 15 megatons of radioactive mayhem. If Kim Jong-un's posturing backfires and President Trump launches the war-headed Pyongyang, it is estimated that a staggering 2,354,690 people would perish. A further 616,070 would be injured and almost 4 million others would be affected by radiation poisoning. Such global landmarks as the Kim Il-sung Stadium of Ideals and the imposing Arch of Triumph would crumble. The fireball of the initial blast would have a radius of 43.2 kilometers and thermal radiation would spread for 293 kilometers downwind. This would either cover all of South Korea, the width of Japan and potentially down to Shanghai in China. The fact President Trump would not want the fallout to poison his allies in the region means he would probably wait for the wind to be blowing northwards before he launches Castle Bravo which it would no doubt infuriate Chinese strongman Xi Jinping, who was with President Trump when he decided to attack Syrian airstrips. Radiation could even, with an easterly breeze, spread noxious radiation as far as Vladivostok, Russia. Of course, a nuclear volley would not be without risk for the Republican. Kim could retaliate in two ways, by nuking Seoul, or a Los Angeles although the jury is out as to whether the desperate's arsenal could reach U.S. soil. The strength of Kim Jong-un's nuclear warhead, if it exists, would be unknown, but there is more information about the strength of one he tested in 2013 than there is about his current models. That device was 10 kilotons and would kill an estimated 77,670 people instantly if it was detonated in the sky above Seoul. A further 268,590 would suffer horrific injuries. If the Tubby Tarm decided to actually strike his nemesis turf, it would only kill 48,940, although the downwind fallout would spread for 98.7 kilometers and potentially back within his own country if the wind blew in the wrong direction. Kim Jong un could potentially strike Los Angeles but American radar would most likely spot the weapon sailing across the North Pacific and shoot it out of the sky. However, if it landed in the downtown area, 86,710 people would perish and 214,910 others would be injured. The biggest threat to President Trump's nation would be if China were so outraged by his obliteration of North Korea that they fired a nuclear weapon at New York. Estimates show that it would kill 2,303,700 civilians and damage the health of 9,311,325 others. If the president had managed to make it out of his top-floor Trump Tower penthouse in time to run to a bunker and order a retaliatory strike, the death toll in Beijing would far outweigh that of New York. Around 4,485,050 would die in a radioactive inferno. The fireball alone would be 25.6 square kilometers, and a further 5 million would be injured. Some 13,599,93 would feel the long-lasting effects of radiation, which causes cancer to rapidly spread throughout the body. Vladimir Putin could, at this stage, support his Chinese counterpart and this could spell disaster for President Trump, who would find himself picking through the charred remains of his once great nation. President Putin has the largest nuclear weapon ever designed, the Tsar Bomb, which at 100 megatons is a formidable beast. If he dropped it on Washington, D.C. it would be good night Vienna for the Trump regime, 2.4 million Americans would be blasted into infinity and a further 6 million would suffer radiation poisoning. The nuclear cloud would travel as far north as Quebec and as far south as Haiti. All the figures in this article were taken from NuclearSecrecy.com, designed by Alex Wellerstein. Wellerstein, World War III warning, North Korea could end the world with just three thermonuclear bombs. North Korea could destroy the entire world with just three bombs, the belligerent state's unofficial ambassador to the West has warned. Honorary North Korean citizen Alejandro Caldebinos, 43, 
issued a chilling warning to the world and insisted no one would touch the country governed by tyrant Kim Jong-un. The Spaniard is one of the few Westerners with access to the secretive regime's inner workings, as he is an honorary special delegate of the North's Committee for Cultural Relations with Foreign Countries. He told Spanish news site Infobi, no one is going to touch Korea. If it is touched the people will defend it with guns and missiles. We have the thermonuclear bomb. With three of those the world is finished. The terrifying claims come as tensions between the West and Kim Jong-un's dictatorship approach boiling point. Pyongyang threatened China of catastrophic consequences to relations if it cooperates with the U.S. over economic sanctions. And expert analysis shows that crazed Kim's nuclear arsenal is at its most sophisticated since the despot took over from his father in 2012. Mr. Caldebinos also offered some insights into life in the Herman nation painting a picture of a utopia. He said, the people have a basic, secure life with dignity. They live in a very peaceful way, there is no social conflict, we don't have people sleeping in the street. It's another way of life, one in which we all work in a huge cooperative movement. Despite the fears of global annihilation, iron-fisted despot Kim was pictured looking jubilant during an opening ceremony of a newly constructed residential complex in Pyongyang. Pyongyang, now Kim Jong-un is threatening Australia with nuclear hellfire. It feels as if a week doesn't go by without North Korea's diminutive dictator, Kim Jong-un, threatening to nuke somebody. Usually the United States. In fact, it happens so often that it's barely worth reporting on it any longer. But following the recent productive meetings between Australian leaders and Vice President Pence, the chubby autocrat has decided to expand the exclusive club of North Korean nuclear targets to include the land down under. NBC News North Korea has launched into a war of words against Australia over the country's alliance with the US, warning the country is within striking a range of a nuclear weapon. A spokesman for the North Korean Foreign Ministry accused Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop of spouting a string of rubbish against the DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, over the country's missile testing, adding Australia is blindly and zealously towing the U.S. line. If Australia persists in following the U.S. moves to isolate and stifle the DPRK and remains a shock brigade of the U.S. master, this will be a suicidal act of coming within the range of the nuclear strike of the strategic force of the DPRK. The Australian Foreign Minister had better think twice about the consequences to be entailed by her reckless tongue lashing before flattering the U.S. To her credit, Aussie Foreign Minister Julie Bishop took the usual, reasoned approach of responding by saying that North Korea would do better figuring out a way to feed their starving population than figuring out ways to start a nuclear war. But the incident is yet another reminder of how North Korea seems to be wielding a lot more bluster than actual threat, at least for the time being. And at this point, what's the benefit of continuing to entertain all of these childish rants? Yes, it should be a serious matter when one national leader threatens another one in this fashion. But let's face it. As I said above, he's always threatening somebody. Just this weekend Kim said he might sink one of our aircraft carriers. That's a very serious charge as well, but does anyone actually think he's going to do it? It's not a stretch of the imagination to say that Kim Jong-un is crazy. And I'm not discounting the danger of having a crazy person in control of some nukes. But is he actually crazy enough to not be aware of, or not care about, the reality of what would happen if he made good on any of these threats? If Kim lights off a single nuke anywhere not even his long-standing relationship with China is going to save him. North Korea will be obliterated. Yes, he'll be able to unleash some awful forces for a short time and the most likely result is that Seoul will be devastated and we'll have a bloody battle on our hands at the DMZ. But before very long at all, Kim's military capabilities and his government would be completely shattered and expended and the Korean peninsula would be a wasteland. Similarly, if North Korea attacks our carrier task force, we're going to be at war. And in that event far more of the world will be on our side than will be against us. I seriously doubt even China would have Kim's back at that point given all they have to lose in terms of economic ties with the United States. Either way, the final outcome for Kim Jong-un is obliteration.
so I would ask again, how worried are we that he would really pull the trigger? This is almost certainly all bluster to keep his people on alert against the West and supporting him in the face of the common enemy. That's not to say that we shouldn't continue international efforts to force North Korea into giving up their weapons program, but what Kim seems to crave more than anything else is attention. It's getting to the point where I'd rather see other world leaders responding to these threats, if they bother to do so at all, with some dismissive remark about the petulant little fat dictator, indicating that we're all bored with his randings and including a reminder that if he's actually stupid enough to attack anyone he will be utterly destroyed. Kim Jong-un might enjoy less support at home if he didn't constantly have these propaganda battles to display for his people. And without that common enemy, North Korea's citizens might have more space to consider just how bad off they are. How many of his people are aware that their dear leader lives in a fabulous palace, replete with luxury and five-star cuisine while shocking numbers of his own people are literally starving to death? Apparently Dennis Rodman was a guest there and can tell you all about it, do most of them even know about Kim's concentration camps and how many of their fellow citizens are dying there every day? In the end it remains desirable to see Kim Jong-un removed. But the best option along those lines would be for his own people to take care of the job. I'm not sure what we'd get in terms of a replacement if there was a revolution in North Korea but it could hardly be much worse than what we've got now, got now.